female in her 50s with no previous medical history, presents to a GP with a headache and an altered gait. She has an urgent MRI of her head as an outpatient. She was admitted shortly after the scan. What does it show? Let's go through the case. Here we have an axial flare sequence of the brain. Flare stands for fluid attenuated inversion recovery and is used in brain imaging. An inversion time or TI is set to null the signal from fluids and like T2 weighted images and unlike T1 weighted images, inflammation shows as bright. How can we tell the difference between the sequences on brain imaging? We can see fluid in the form of CSF here within the ventricles. On flare, we can see fluid is dark. Now the white matter, which is more central, is darker than grey matter, which we can see within the outer cortex. On T1 weighted imaging, again fluid is dark, but this time, and unlike flare, the grey matter is darker than white matter. T2 weighted images differs to both of these in that fluid is now bright, whilst on T2, like on flare, white matter is darker than grey matter, making T1 the only sequence out of the three where white matter is whiter than grey matter. So on the flare sequence, we can see there is marked dilatation of the lateral ventricles, whilst more inferiorly, we can see the fourth ventricle is normal in calibre, suggesting this could be obstructive hydrocephalus, so we need to look for an obstructing lesion. Have a look at the anatomy on this normal case, and we can see the foramen of Monroe connects the third ventricle with the lateral ventricles. In our case, we can see there is a well-defined lesion involving the roof and anterior aspect of the third ventricle involving the foramen of Monroe. This lesion shows high signal on flare. It has lower signal than CSF on T2 images, while slightly hyper-intense to grey and white matter. It shows higher signal than the adjacent brain on T1 images, whilst on post-contrast images, there is no appreciable enhancement. So what could this lesion be? A colloid cyst is a top differential. This is a benign epithelial lined cyst and can be seen incidentally on CT as a small high density lesion in the region of the foramen of Monroe. Given their position, they can produce significant hydrocephalus and symptoms. MRI signal characteristics are highly variable and depend on the state of the fluid within. Lower T2 signal can reflect more viscous contents and can mean the cyst can be more difficult to aspirate. Usually there is no enhancement post-contrast, and so this could fit what we have here. Meningiomas are extra-axial lesions that usually enhance vividly, and so the lack of contrast enhancements and the lack of a broad dural base makes this unlikely. Could this represent blood products? Well, the well-defined nature does not really fit with this, and the colloid cyst seems by far the most likely diagnosis. Going back to the flare sequence, we can see high signal surrounding the lateral ventricles. In the context of dilated lateral ventricles and an obstructing lesion, this is suspicious for transepidymal edema. This is a sign of acute obstructive hydrocephalus and there is disruption of the ventricular epidymal lining leading to edema within the periventricular white matter. Management of colloid cysts depend on its size and whether it's causing symptoms. Given the acute obstructive hydrocephalus here, the lesion was urgently resected leading to resolution of the hydrocephalus and resolution of symptoms. Although the lesion was easy to see here, smaller colloid cysts can be easily missed, so be sure to review the forum of Monroe between the third and lateral ventricles.